This is the Akaso V50 Pro, a 4K action camera for under $120. Would this little camera be a good solution for motovloggers? Well, that's what we're going to find out today because we're going to do a quick unboxing and then I'm going to take this out, put it on my motorcycle, and we're going to see how it works as a moto vlogging camera. This video is not sponsored by Acaso, but they did send me the camera to test and review. So when I received the Acaso V50 Pro, I was pretty impressed with the packaging. It's pretty substantial for an inexpensive camera. It comes in this large green package. Let's open it up and see what's inside. Well, the first thing I notice is this little pamphlet. It's uh, basically like a user guide, a quick start guide, you might say. And that's the only documentation I could find anywhere in the box. There's nothing inside this little box. It's just a spacer. And then when I get to this box, I'm wondering, what the heck is this? I thought it was maybe a box full of accessories, but it turns out, as you'll see in just a second, it's just a little action figure. Now, this little guy actually has a name. I think it's a Casa, and he's a fisherman, and his little fishing net was broken off when I got him. So the only box left is the camera itself, and it comes in a GoPro-style package, uh, which you open on one end and just slide it out. The camera is on one of the mounts, which is exactly the same as a GoPro mount. It's also inside of a waterproof case. So if you do plan on using this underwater, you would need to use this case. And we'll just pop this case off and take a look at the camera. I will say the waterproof case does feel pretty solid and it does have a nice rubber seal on the back door, which feels like it would uh, provide adequate protection from moisture. So the case itself looks pretty well made. There are some little getting started instructions on a sticker that's on the screen on the back of the camera. The first thing I noticed when I pull the camera out of the case is it feels very compact. It's very small. It does feel solid, though. It feels pretty well made. It's all plastic, and uh, there is a little cover over the lens to protect the lens during shipping, I suppose. On the left side of the camera, you'll find three open ports. There is a micro SD card slot, a mini HDMI port, and a USB-C port. Now to get started, Acaso recommends downloading their app and installing it on your smartphone so that you can communicate with the camera. I'm going to do that later. Uh, I do like that there's a battery door on the bottom that is weather sealed and there's a quarter 20 tripod mount. On the right side of the camera is a speaker, small speaker. And then if you look on top of the camera, there are only two buttons. There's like a power button and then an action button. You also have a little LED indicator and then a very small microphone on top. Now to open the battery door, you simply slide it and flip it open. Uh, looks pretty secure and pretty weather sealed. Now let's see what else comes in this accessory box. There is a lens cleaning cloth and what looks to be some zip ties and maybe some Velcro pads. Another door for the back of the waterproof case. We have some mounting hardware. This is actually a strap and a remote control. They do give you this little remote control, which is nice because that's an option on a GoPro. And then we just have a, an assortment of mounting hardware. I'm not going to show every piece, but they do actually give you quite a bit of mounting hardware for this camera. They include this small plastic frame that you can use instead of the waterproof case uh, when you're not using the camera underwater. That's what we're going to use. And they include this little battery charger that can hold two of their batteries. And this turns out to be quite a disaster. Here's one of the batteries. They're very small. So my initial plan was to put both batteries into this charger and plug in the USB-C cable uh, to let both batteries come up to a full charge before I began doing my testing. I'm just allowing the batteries to sit on my desk while I unpack everything else, which is mostly mounting hardware. There's another little wrist strap for that remote control, and they include a USB-C charging cable for this battery charger.
Before I even plugged in the USB-C charging cable to the battery charger, I noticed it was getting very hot. I could feel it in my hand. I looked inside and it looks like it's actually starting to melt. Uh, further inspection reveals that the posts on the charger, there are little markings for positive negative and they're actually reversed from what are on the battery. The battery is also marked positive and negative and what I'm thinking is they included the incorrect charger for these batteries. Now the batteries do fit in the camera correctly and you can charge the batteries inside the camera thankfully with the USB-C cable and that's what I'm going to do. Thankfully they did send the correct batteries Otherwise, this test would have been over in a hurry. And there is a little red light to let you know that the battery is charging. And it does turn the camera on. When you plug it into power, it turns the camera on. So if you want all of the power to go toward charging the battery rather than running the camera, just turn the camera off and it will continue to charge. I can't help but wonder if I had left this charger on and plugged into USB-C power, if it would have eventually melted or maybe even caught fire. I fortunately was in the room and, and could feel it get warm, but what if I'd walked away and just left it there? While the battery was charging, I started looking around for documentation, but all I could find was this little quick start guide. No documentation or user guide came with my camera. I was able to download a PDF from their website. When the battery is fully charged, I decide to go ahead and insert the micro SD card. I'm using a 128 gigabyte uh, SanDisk card. And it's a little finicky getting it in, but that's true of all action cameras. To turn the camera on, you just press and hold that little red button on the right on top, and it makes kind of an odd sound when it starts up, but it does start up, and then you can locate the menu by swiping down on the screen, and this is where you can set various settings for photos, video, a variety of settings. It actually gives you quite a bit of settings available. I want to emphasize that this video is not going to be a tutorial on how to use the camera. I'm not going to go through all the menus and all the options. I'm simply wanting to see how it works as a mode of vlogging camera. There are other videos out there that will go through all of these settings, so I recommend that you look for one of those if you want that type of information. I will, however, tell you that the touch screen is a little finicky. It's not very responsive. Sometimes you have to tap on things two or three times. Uh, sometimes it just doesn't feel, uh, you know, it's not going to give you that same feeling like a GoPro or like an Insta360. But if you're patient, uh, you can get the little buttons to click and everything to work. There is no haptic feedback either on the screen. But then again, it's a $120 camera. Operating the camera takes a little getting used to because there's only two buttons. You have a power button and then you have this, I guess you call it an action button. So if you want to start and stop recording, uh, it can't even uh, be used to pull up some menus and things. So it just takes some learning. Sometimes you have to hold it down to get it to do certain functions. Again, this is not a training video, uh, but y the documentation sort of explains how all these buttons work. This camera will shoot video in 4K at 30 frames per second, 2.7K at 30 frames, uh, 1080p at 90, 60, or 30, and then 720 up to 120 frames per second, and all the various ones from there down. And it gives you quite a few choices as far as shooting photos. I only took a couple of photos, and honestly, they weren't great. But I think people who buy this are buying it as a video camera and not a photography camera. One little glitch I found is I would click on the image stabilization in the menu and it never brought anything up. I never could tell if image stabilization was turned on or off. From the documentation it says you can turn it on or off, but I never could get it to respond in any way. You tap it and it doesn't do anything. So I never could tell if I had image stabilization turned on or off. 
The camera does have built-in Wi-Fi, and when you turn the Wi-Fi on, that's how you can connect to the camera using your smartphone, and then you can actually see what's coming through the lens on your smartphone. You can control the camera through a smartphone. That's a pretty nice feature for an inexpensive camera, and you can also adjust many of the settings. Some settings, however, were not available through the app, and again, I'm not going to get into the app in this video, but you know that it's there if you need it. One thing I will point out, and I apologize for the blurry video on the back of the screen, it's because I'm using my iPhone to shoot this. One thing I noticed is all of these little icons on the back of the screen, which show you the current state the camera is in, did not match what was in the documentation that I downloaded from their website. Here's a screenshot from the PDF user guide I downloaded, and as you can see, they show the battery capacity to be in the upper right-hand corner. On my camera, the battery capacity actually shows up in the lower right-hand corner. The documentation shows the selected video resolution in the lower left corner, but mine shows up in the upper right-hand corner. And this was true for most of the settings on the camera, and it really makes it confusing and difficult to learn the camera and try to understand what's going on. It's almost as if the documentation is for a different model of camera, kind of like the battery charger. I think it's time to put this on the bike and see how it performs. I mounted the Acaso right next to my GoPro Hero 8 so that I could compare the two and let you see how it compares to a GoPro. Obviously not a fair fight. The GoPro is a more expensive, more sophisticated camera, but you'll get an idea. Before I leave the driveway, this is what your image looks like coming out of the Acaso V50 Pro. And here is the GoPro Hero 8. The two biggest differences you'll notice between the Acaso V50 Pro and the GoPro are going to be the colors and the image stabilization. Now obviously the GoPro is a more sophisticated, more expensive camera, so you would expect it to be better. And honestly, I don't know in this comparison if I have image stabilization turned on or not on the V50 Pro because I never could confirm that. The next thing you'll notice is the colors appear a little more washed out, maybe a little more overexposed on the Acaso, and I'm going to see if I can correct that in Final Cut Pro. So I'm going to add in a little bit of contrast, I'm going to make some changes, and here you can see what I was able to do with the colors just to get it to look a little more vivid. Now let's see if I can apply some image stabilization in Final Cut Pro to smooth out the video a little bit. Here you can see the stabilization has been applied and it does make a slight improvement. The background noise you hear is coming from the GoPro Hero 8. I've reduced the volume quite a bit, but let's listen to the audio coming from the Acaso V50 Pro. It's very muddled and very subdued, almost like you're underwater. I don't think you're going to want to use the Acaso for any audio recording. My next test was to get the camera out at highway speeds and see how it performed in the image stabilization and I'm going about 60 miles an hour here you can see the comparison between the GoPro and the Acaso okay so let's go back to the studio and I'm going to give you my final assessment and thoughts on this Acaso V50 Pro Okay, so now that I've had a few days to play around with this Acaso V50 Pro, uh, let's just cover some of the basics real quick. Ba I would consider this an entry-level action camera. Some of the good and the bad, what I like, what I don't like. Let's go for the bad first, because I want to end on a positive note, sort of positive. Okay, first of all, the battery charger that came with my camera obviously was not the correct battery charger base for this camera. Uh, I could even notice when I looked closer on the contact points, they were reversed from what the contact points are on the batteries. So, in other words, I, the negative terminal is lining up to the positive terminal on the charger. And I'm, I'm assuming that's what was causing that overheating issue and the base actually melted. That is an inexcusable uh, error that should never happen. That 
could, ha if I had not paid attention to how warm that got, I don't know if it could have caught fire. I don't know what could have happened. Uh, it certainly could have melted it completely through and maybe ruined something on the desk or wherever I had it. That was the that's the first bad thing is that the the charger they included with my camera didn't work at all. It was actually defective and the incorrect one, I assume. The other thing is the little action figure. I'm not going to take him out of the box again. I think they his name is Akasa. Uh, and I don't get, I don't get it. Why would they even include that unless they're aiming this camera at kids? Maybe they think kids are going to buy this or parents are going to buy this for their kids to use on their bicycles or something like that, since it is an inexpensive product. So maybe that's why they include the little action figure. Mine was broken, by the way, the little fishing net was broken off. Fortunately, even with this uh, battery charger issue, fortunately, you can charge the battery in the camera. So they, they do allow you to plug the camera into USB-C, charge the battery in camera, and there is a light to show you that it is charging, and when it's fully charged, that light goes out. About image quality, audio quality, obviously the audio quality, you're not going to be able to use this camera for any kind of vlogging, because the audio... I don't even know how they get a microphone to, to come out that muddy sounding, but it's really bad audio. Okay, this is my first little test video. I'm just in my studio, and I am shooting 4K30 using the microphone that's built into the camera. I think it has a microphone on top and one on the bottom. Here's one of the batteries, the second battery. Here is the battery charger that they that came with it that ended up melting because I think it's the wrong charger. Uh, as far as video quality, uh, I just I didn't change any of the default settings. I just took it right out of the box, put it on the handlebar, and what you saw is what comes right out of the camera with the default settings. They're overexposed. Uh, there's not a lot of contrast. Some of that can be corrected. If you if you use Final Cut Pro, you can do color correction. You can do some things to add some vivid colors and bring it back a little bit uh, if you want to spend the time to do that. As far as image stabilization, I don't know if I have image stabilization turned on in the camera or not. I was never able to get the menu system to indicate whether or not image stabilization was on or off. There is a menu item for image stabilization, but when I tap it, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't bring up another screen with an on-off option. Uh, there's no icon that I can find on the back of the screen that indicates that image stabilization is on or off. For most action cameras, if, you, if you're walking or riding with it or something, you're going to want image stabilization. So I, I honestly don't know if the image stabilization works or not because I don't know if it was ever turned on. I was never able to tell whether or not it was turned on. And I made sure that I had the latest firmware update on this camera. Again, you can correct some of that image stabilization in uh, an aftermarket program like Final Cut or something, but you shouldn't have to. I would say also in my tests where I'm showing the camera looking back at me, uh, it's going to appear more shaky with, an, with a subject that close to the camera. If you had the camera turned around and you were viewing, say, just landscape as you're going down the road, or if you have, had it mounted on the back of your motorcycle facing backward, you probably wouldn't notice as much shake as you do with me in the image that close to the camera. So I'll just say that if you're planning on mounting this on your handlebars facing forward so that you're looking out, you know, this way or on your helmet, probably wouldn't be as shaky as the way I have it on the handlebars. The other negative is no documentation came with my camera. I had no user guide, no manual. Fortunately, you can download this in a PDF format from their website. I watched a couple of other YouTube videos, and I know at least one of them. He got this big, nice manual that showed how to use the camera, but nothing was in my kit uh, other than the little thing that talked about the action figure. That's the only thing I got. Uh, there was a little quick start guide, and that was about it. And the last thing is, even after I downloaded the documentation, the 
interface in the menu system that's actually on the back of this camera, the images don't match what's in the documentation. They're showing icons that I should be able to see on this screen, and I don't see those icons on this screen. It doesn't, it doesn't even look similar. So the format of this menu system doesn't match what they're showing in the documentation, or at least that's my experience. Now, if you have the V50 Pro and you've experienced any of these same issues, please let me know, or maybe I'm doing something wrong. I don't know. I did not test the waterproof case. Uh, it does look substantial. It looks like it's probably a good waterproof design. I don't think I have a problem with that. Now, let me get to the good stuff now. Okay, I'm going to talk about some of the good things about what I think about this V50 Pro. I like they include the little uh, frame that lets you use it without the waterproof case. That's a nice addition. And I like the waterproof case. It looks nice. I like that it has a simple operation. It's just got these two buttons on top, and once you figure out what they do and kind of how they work, uh, it you know it's pretty simple to operate. So if it were something for a kid, I think they'd be able to figure it out pretty easily. Of course, sometimes kids have an easier time figuring out complicated things than we do as adults. Uh, I like the fact that it has USB-C for charging. Uh, it also has another port, which I think is a mini HDMI port for output. And I like the way they do the SD card. But remember, when you use this in this frame, it is not waterproof at all. All of these ports are exposed. If you're going to be in any kind of weather condition, you're going to have to use the waterproof case. Another good feature is that they include this little remote control. I think that is a very, very nice addition. you got to buy that extra for a GoPro. And they also include two batteries. Now, the batteries are small. And when I, mine was fully charged, or it said fully charged on the screen, and after about 10 minutes of filming, it was down to 20%. So I don't know if the battery life is going to be very good on this camera. So just take that for what it's worth. But I do like the fact that they include the remote. And they also include a lot of, I've got them back in the box now, but a lot of different mounting accessories. So lots of different mounts. Uh, that are appear to be pretty well made. So the good news is uh, it does offer simple operation. It offers multiple video resolutions up to 4K30. So it does do 4K video. It's, you know, like I say, it's questionable, but it is an inexpensive camera. We have to keep that in mind. It's $120. It's not $400. Mm. So who is this camera really for? Well, like I said, I think they may be aiming this at the kid market because of the little action figure. Maybe that's maybe that's what they're thinking with this. Uh, it is if you needed a second camera, if you're motor vlogging and you need a second camera, maybe just for a rear view of your motorcycle as you're going down the highway. Uh, you're not going to be able to use it for audio, I don't think. So and there is no external audio. You can't plug a microphone into it unless they make an adapter. Maybe they make an adapter for that USB-C port. I don't know. So anyway, that's kind of the wrap-up of my review of the Akaso V50 Pro. Now, you'll remember that I reviewed the Brave 8 from Akaso a few months ago. Obviously, that's a much more substantial camera. It's more expensive, but it's still much less than a GoPro. Uh, and for a moto vlogger, that's going to be a better solution than this V50 Pro. So anyway, thanks for joining me today. If you like videos like this, please take a second to click the subscribe button down below. Don't forget that notification bell so that YouTube will notify you when I come out with new videos. And if you ride a motorcycle... Ride often, but ride safe.